join us for the Zion Worship Altar Sessions this Sunday at 3 p.m. Catch the live streams on YouTube at www.youtube slash Zion Worship Altar. And you can also join us physically on ground for our sessions at the Zion Grounds in Nelson. Remember to come along with a plus one. God, richly bless you. Zion Worship Altar, the heart of worship. Consider standing with the Zion Worship Altar as a partner. We have three partner packages. You can be a gold partner standing with us by giving at least 50,000 Uganda shillings and above. Alternatively, you can choose to be a silver partner giving at least 30,000 Uganda shillings and above. Or you can also choose to be a bronze partner sowing at least 15,000 Uganda shillings and above. God richly bless you. Zion Worship Altar, the heart of worship. And the pillars. Ne paji. Sabuko se chigambe mpisa. Mpisa. The disciplines. Mpisa. And pillars. Ne paji. Of a fellowship. Eza. Eza fellowship. Eza lukumana. Let's repeat that. Katuchidem. We, we always come and fellowship on the Zion worship altar. Will it say that we how many believe that we always come and fellowship on this altar? I am seeing people who are not believing with me. Okay, I think some are now believing with me. So we are going to look at the pillars of something that will affirm that will strengthen something that we always come and do. I don't know whether it's something I'm, I'm speaking to. We always come and fellowship on this altar. God has permitted us today to learn the pillars and discipline of fellowship on the altar. Praise be to the King. Hallelujah. Amen. In the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 42, we are going to share those things. Should I call this, this is a stage? Praise be to Jesus. When we talk about a pillar, it is something that holds, that supports something of a greater magnitude, something of greater weight on its top. Praise be to Jesus. When we come to the altar, we are doing something that the heavens, one, stamp in it. That God himself is pleased about. One of the most important things in the life of a Christian. Praise be to Jesus. Even the Bible says, do not hesitate to fellowship like others do. Meaning there are others who don't fellowship. But if God has allowed us to come and fellowship here, there are some great things we need to know. And those we are going to share. A pillar support something very vital and that is the fellowship on the altar where we come praise be to Jesus when you are building just as we are building this altar just as we are building this fellowship every now and then 
You have seen people building houses. You can even move your eyes around the neighborhood. And you can see these houses here. Most of them have pillars. Some pillars are even covered with cement. That you cannot see them. But the strength sometimes of the building is in the pillars of the building. If we do not hold this pillar, if we do not anchor this pillar well, that is supporting this stage, this roof here shall fall. And we shall not even be able to come here. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and to prayer. That is one of us. I want us to go slow. But in the few minutes, we shall hear what the Lord wants to hear. To ask to hear. My brother, let's go slow to that verse. Verse 42. Thank you. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to the breaking of the bread and to prayer. Now, here are just things we want us to share. Praise be to God. The apostles, the Bible says, we are built on the foundation of the prophets and the apostles. Now, we are going to see the function of the people that say we are built what did they do in their times of fellowship? I don't know whether we should repeat that. The Bible says we we want to see what did the apostles do? The foundation the saying that we are built on. What they always do in their fellowship. When they used to come on the altar. What did the apostles used to do? That were disciplines and their fellowship. That strengthened their fellowship. That pushed their fellowship to the ends of the world. The Bible says, the Bible says their impact, the impact of their fellowships went beyond, went beyond Jerusalem, went beyond Samaria, went beyond Judea, up to the ends of the world. But that it did not just happen in the blink of an eye. It was not an overnight thing. The Bible says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to the fellowship and to the breaking of the bread and prayer. Now, look here. I was searching what the word you can go to church on Sunday. The next Sunday you go to church. At around 11. The following Sunday you go to church. Maybe at around 10. You finish the whole month going to church. Praise be to Jesus. Most of the Christians misunderstand the culture, the custom 
before he's going to church, of going to the fellowship. When we look at the apostles, the Bible says that they devoted themselves, meaning they used to do the thing, not always, but they used to do it always, and every time they could do it, they could go to another level that is being devoted in something. You don't only do something as a routine, but every time you do it, you make sure you do it in another way more than you used to do it. I don't know whether I'm speaking to someone. It's not just singing every day, not praising every day, but every time you praise, you praise more than you did yesterday. Every time you give, you give more than you gave yesterday. Every time you clap, every time you clap your hands, you clap hands more than you did the other time. You are being devoted to such a thing. Praise me to Jesus. The Bible says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. They are showing you what the disciples used to do. We have looked at what we call devotion. These guys devoted themselves to the teachings. I have been here for some time and many people have stood on this pulpit and they have shared the word with us. Was it last Sunday? Sunday, Wednesday. Mm, uh, 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 my, sister, my sister Sophie was here. Sister I think I was the one interpreting her. She was sharing us something very great. We have been in experiences here of worship. And powerful things have been said. It is my question to you. Do you get devoted to those words? Because that is what the Bible is saying. That they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings. When someone comes and stands to preach, and God permits him to say his word, the other person comes and preaches. Do you get devoted in that word? Because the Lord brings such a word with a purpose to build you, to edify you, to take you to another level. And they are saying that, no, use your tongue because the tongue has power. Like how Sister Sophie was saying, God has brought such a word to take you to another level. So getting devoted in such a word does not only end last Sunday. But when even another preacher comes, you hearken to what they're saying. You get rooted in the word. You go and internalize the word. You meditate it day and night. You are getting devoted into the teachings. Praise me to Jesus. Otherwise, when they preach here, and you don't get devoted to the word and you go away well you come back the, the, the other time and still you go away and you do not get devoted and rooted in the word then you are not getting devoted to the teachings of the apostles here of the prophets here of the men and women of who stand here praise be to God I said God allows these people to stand here they speak what God has imparted to their hearts so that the Lord pushes that word to you because what does the Bible say I have been given uh, this invitation slip here I have been reading it and it says there is something down there but for the word of God is living 
and active. Let me just end there. It is alive and active. Sometimes, sometimes people think or to some people it may seem as if the word of the Lord is not active because they are not devoted to the word. You don't do as the one. You don't do as the men and women of God have preached here. You throw it away. You come back the fallen fellowship. You throw it away. You come back the fallen fellowship. No, okay, you are regular in attendance. But, but then you are not devoted to the teaching. The apostles did not only come to the fellowship. But whenever they could come, the Bible says they were devoted to the apostles' teachings. And to the fellowship. Because there is no way they would have had the teachings without fellowshipping. Should we repeat that? Whenever you miss coming to the altar, there is something great you are missing. Let me tell you every day, like here every Sunday we fellowship. God has prepared something special. Brother Solomon has been here saying, you say I'm already sensitive to what people are saying here. He said that God's ways are so amazing. They're so great. They're not like the ways of men. You never know a day God is going to transform your life. You never know which moment God is going to use because his ways are so much different from the ways of men. So there's no way the, these people will get devoted in the teachings without fellowship because in the fellowships on the altar they used to share some teachings like just we are doing it now but when you come to fellowship on the altar we are sharing something praise be to Jesus to the breaking of bread one of the significance in breaking Bread is creating unity because these guys used to break bread in remembrance of the body of Christ, they were together. There is no time. In the Bible, they talk about breaking of bread. And it's one person. In most of the cases, when they talk about breaking of the bread, there are people communing together, uniting together. You see, our God is a God of unity. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That is the Trinity. They are ever together. Our God is a God of unity. Every altar that is bound to stand. I don't know whether son or child of daughter you are hearing me. Every altar of fellowship that is bound to stand. Whose impact is to spread the boundaries of the world. There should be unity in that fellowship. I don't know whether you're hearing what we are saying. These guys, they are saying they didn't only get devoted only in the teachings but the other things they did that we are sharing as they used to come to the fellowship and they used to come to congregate they used to share the one they used to get devoted 
the world. They used to break bread. They used to have holy communion. And it, 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 it made them united. We normally sing a song. That as we lift our hands in one accord. Let me tell you. God is a God of unity. These are some of principles that we need to know. And a fellowship that is to stand. There should be unity. There should be divine unity. Beat in the technicians here. Beat in the worship team here. Beat in the ministers here. Beat in the congregants. God is always Please. God is always pleased when he realizes that is unity amidst his people. Praise to be Jesus. Unity has power. The people who united but for an evil purpose. There were people in the Bible who united who had a strong accord who were one who were believing one thing they had things in common it was so powerful to them although it was evil you have ever heard of them they are trying to build the tower of Babel let me tell you their unity was progressing God saw the strength and the unity these guys had and decided to distort and disorganize them they had strong unity. Let me tell you something. Listen to this. Listen to this. If you have any neighbor disturbing you, listen to this. God is a God of principles. The more Christians will not understand the principles of God. And the more we shall not do the principles of God. The more we shall seem to be far and think God doesn't work for us. Let me tell you this. God is principle. Listen to this. This is not a cult. It's not a false doctrine. It is the truth. God's principle works for both the evil and the good. When a sorcerer gives, he will prosper. You didn't hear that. When a witch doctor gives, when, when an unbeliever gives, he will be blessed. When a, when a believer doesn't give, meaning he has not followed the principle, he will not be blessed. Should I tell you something else? When you plant a bean seed in a shrine, it will germinate if there are proper conditions. God greatest need for germination. When you plant it in church on cement, it will die because you have not followed the principles of germination. You will be surprised seeing harvest from a shrine. <laughs> Praise be, be to Jesus. And prayer. I feel God is not allowing me to leave the point of breaking of bread. I don't know why. Brother Solomon and Sister Sophie, this is what the Lord imparted on my heart today. This is such a great vision. 
and to the others if there is any disunity in this fellowship any disunity in the ministers it will affect this altar God being a God of unity wants to descend in unity praise be to Jesus and to prayer let me put my humble request let us get devoted in prayer if we want to take Nasana we should not just say it one, let me tell you something one of the definitions of an altar I have been making research on this it is a place and someone listen to this it is a place where humanity meets with divinity you've not heard this please one of the definitions that try to break out an altar it is a place where humanity meets divinity now look here I have already told you that the principles of God work for both the evil and the good. I don't know how many times you want me, Christian, to repeat that. The evil people have altars. It is also called an altar. Am I communicating? The things they do on an altar. Let me tell you something. The things they do on an altar when they come to fellowship. They are things that are done and were done and supposed to be done by the children of God. Let me put it right. These guys just manipulate godly things and they do evil. I don't know whether you, you've seen or you've heard of the altar of those evil people. They also have prayers. You didn't hear that. They also have prayers. They call people's names on the altar. They call people's blessing on the altar. Listen. Let me repeat this. A principle will work even for the evil person. And they have actualized the principles and they have profited. The child of God doesn't want to exercise the principles of God on the altar. And to prayer. If we want to take this place and our God we worship doesn't only remain our God of these boundaries here but people of Mutungo get to know about Zion worship altar people of Sana come to know about Zion worship altar people in Chikubampanga get to know about Zion worship altar people in Chitesh the same people in Gaias are the same we have to get devoted in prayer. We have to get devoted in prayer. I have not said we have to pray. The Bible has not said they pray. The Bible said they got devoted in prayer. 
Baba. Do you know what it means to get devoted in prayer? When something is a mass, you can't see it at all. Praise be to God. I said humanity meets divinity on an altar. If we want to call Nansana to Zion worship altar, we have to exercise this principle. There's a verse I always read. They talk about Elisa. Elisa or Elijah. And the Bible says that these were normal men. But they did exploit. They, I think they never even reached the era where we are. I mean the things in the era where we are. Can you give me some other verses? And I try to wind up. I feel I have a lot but we are caught with time. Listen. Do you know what happened? Do you know what happened on the altar? Child of God, I'm winding up. Satan, don't take away your focus. Do you know what happened when these guys were devoted in the things we've shared? The next verse says, everyone was filled with everything. And many wonders and miracles were done by apostles. You joke with the power in unity. Don't joke with the power in getting devoted in the teachings. Don't joke with the power in getting devoted in prayer. Not in only prayer, but in prayer. Getting devoted in prayer. Those are two different things. Everyone was filled with airway. And many wonders, miracles, and signs were done by the apostles. Can we go to the next verse? Our time is fast spent. All the believers were together. And had everything in common. We, we cannot share all this today. Can we go to the next verse? Can we go to the next verse? Selling their possessions and goods they gave to everyone as he had need. Have you had the things that happen on the altar? These are the things that even the sorcerers do. But because they acknowledge the principles, I have told you, go and try it. I don't know whether you can enter a shrine anyway, child of God. I said when you plant a seed in the shrine, give an acknowledgement of the principles of germination. It will germinate. It will sprout into a pin seed. A pin plant. If you do the opposite in a church and you place it on cement, you tie it in a porcelain bag, it will not sprout. And you wonder whether your God is living. Are we, are we communicating, Alex? Amen. Yes. Selling their possessions and goods they gave to everyone as he had need. On the altar, they give sacrifices. You, did you hear that verse? Selling their possessions. The sorcerers even tell people, go and get your cow. Go and get your goat. They even send them for things that are just complex to get. Go and get a liver of a snail. Does a snail have a liver anyway? Get off a 
selling their possessions <laughs> and their goods, <laughs> they gave to everyone as as they had the need. I do not have yet a project that of, of charity. But indirectly I have it at school. Sometimes a percentage of my salary is swallowed by helping learners. Why? It's hidden in the principle here. If we want our altar to go ahead. Okay, give us another verse. Maybe these people will understand when we get the other verse. All the believers we are to know the other one. We are winding up, child of God. Every day. Tell your neighbor, every day. Every day. They continued to meet together in the temple course. They broke bread in their homes. Have you realized the Bible is repeating these things? Oh, Jesus. This time is fast spent. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. What's the other? What's the other? Praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. The Lord added to them. The Lord added to them. Statement after it was now. That comes after every other thing we've read. The people who wrote the Bible, one of the greatest authors of the Bible is the Holy Spirit because he inspired these people. This verse has not come in verse 42. No. The things the Bible has talked about that the apostles used to do they resulted into this. These were the fruits. These were the fruits. The Bible says in the end and the Lord added to their number. Not on Monday. Not on on Tuesday. Not on on Friday. But the Bible records that added to their number daily those who were being saved by his power in those principles we have shared. God respects someone who does his principles. Praise God, child of God. I feel like I'm scaring these people. Is it so? People are so humbled as if we are going for Holy Communion. What's the problem? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I, I, I just I just kindly beg. I stop here. I, in the first place, I pray to God so that the Holy Ghost opens your ears. I pray to God. Someone stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.